Hello and welcome to this free anaesthetic tutorial on ultrasound. This tutorial was created by Dr. Robin Lee, who currently works at the Royal Bournemouth Hospital and was created in October 2020. It's been narrated by Dr. Dan Wise and I thank Dr. Robin Lee for her contribution. She's contributed as part of the Mersey Video Viva Club and this is a great example of peer-to-peer -peer trainee sharing resources in order to benefit the wider trainee community. If you are interested in participating, please send me an email at merseyvideoviverclub at gmail.com or search Video Viva Club into Google. What is ultrasound? Well, ultrasound is an imaging technique. It's based on the transmission of high frequency sound waves above 20 kilohertz. And its uses, certainly in the medical context, rely on a higher frequency. And this is about 2.5 to 15 megahertz. Ultrasound relies on the use of the piezoelectric effect. And this piezoelectric effect is when an electric potential is applied across a quartz crystal. And this induces mechanical stress. And similarly, if mechanical stress is applied to the crystal, this can cause the production of an electric current and ultrasound machines use this principle in order to function. So the ultrasound transducer uses the change from electrical energy to mechanical energy and moves that back into electrical energy. And this graph shows us a little bit more about that. So as you can see in picture number one, electrical energy is being converted by the transducer to sound waves. The sound waves are being reflected by the tissues in picture two. And then it is these reflected sound waves picked up by the transducer, the piezoelectric crystals, that causes vibration, that causes electricity to be generated, and via the use of an algorithm in a computer, this builds up the picture that you or I see when we're using the ultrasound. So a bit more about how ultrasound works. So the probe generates the pulsed sound wave, and that's the piezoelectric effect that we've already discussed. We talked about how that sound wave passes through the body and that is a depth that's determined by the frequency of the sound wave so the number of sound waves per unit time and then different tissues have a differing ability to reflect sound waves and I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute but when there is a boundary between two different tissues this is what can cause reflection of sound waves back towards the probe and here you can see so in this picture you've got your original wave that's being produced by the receiver it hits an object the distance that it travels before it hits the object is r and you see the green arrow is the reflected wave and those are delivered back to the transducer and ultimately those waves are the ones that cause the piezoelectric crystals to vibrate and it's that vibration that causes the electronic signal to be formed and this is what causes the picture. Here are a couple of pictures. So there's the liver ultrasound and also fetal ultrasound which are classical uses of ultrasound in the medical profession. And as we've already said, the transducer uses the piezoelectric effect and then these are the types of image that can be formed. So here's another abdominal image, a really lovely image, and you can see lots and lots of detail here. So essentially, every little arrow that you can see, each dot represents the depth from where the wave was reflected. And the brightness of all of the dots, so every pixel correlates to the strength of the reflected wave. Different tissues are able to reflect waves differently. So things with a lot of calcium, like bones or gallstones, they're very echo reflective and they cause a higher energy of reflected sound waves. They show up more white and this is essentially you know, a more echo bright image and you can see that. Solid organs or thickened fluids, they have a weaker reflection and they generally show up as grey. And then things like fluid, so blood or urine, generally very little reflection. And so they show up in a darker colour on ultrasound. Other things to note, if there is a higher frequency of sound waves being generated, this will lead to greater resolution and a more clear picture. However, the more sound waves that are produced, the higher frequency, this reduces the wavelength and this reduces the penetrating capacity of each sound wave. So in order to image deeper structures, a lower frequency with a larger wavelength is required. However, the problem there is that the resolution, the clarity of the image will be less 
good. And another definition is spatial resolution. And this is the ability to distinguish between two separate objects. Contrast resolution is the ability to distinguish between two separate objects, even though they've got similar echo reflective properties. So here you can see this looks like a photo of the Doppler effect. And the Doppler effect is observed when the source of sound waves is moving with reference to an observer. A common example is the ambulance siren. So the sound will be heard differently depending on whether the ambulance is driving towards or away from you. And this effect occurs due to an apparent increase in frequency. And this is an apparent increase in frequency of sound waves to the observer when the source of the sound is moving towards the observer. And then there is an apparent decrease in frequency of sound waves when the source of sound is moving away from the observer. And therefore, as the sound moves further away, the frequency of waves will be lower and so the volume or sound that is produced will become lower. But interestingly, there isn't actually a change in the frequency of the sound waves that are being produced. And this is the Doppler effect. One use of the Doppler effect in medical imaging is demonstrated below. And it can be specifically used to look at blood flow. And there are a couple of things, a couple of pieces of information that we can gain from using the Doppler effect in ultrasound. One of them is the direction of fluid flow and the other is the velocity. So out of these two images, you have a blue image and a red image. Which one is flowing towards the transducer? Well, it's the red image. And this is because the frequency is higher and this causes a positive Doppler shift and it's depicted as red. So therefore the blood moving away from the transducer must be the blue image. And this is because the frequency appears lower because the waves are moving away from the transducer and so there is what's said to be a negative Doppler shift. So further clinical uses of ultrasound. So ultrasound can be used to image cavities such as the chest or the abdomen and can be used to assist in drainage of fluid collections. It can aid imaging of veins, so in difficult venous anatomy, or it can aid central venous cannulation in the theatre or ITU. Cranial ultrasound is used in neonates to identify hemorrhage. And this image below, echocardiography. It could be transthoracic, it could be transesophageal, a very useful skill to have is transesophageal echo in the ITU. And I think as, as the future goes on, more and more anaesthetists and more and more intensivists will be au fait with this very useful skill. Obviously, to us anaesthetists, regional anaesthesia has been fundamentally altered by the increased use of ultrasound. So, of course, there are going to be limitations of our ultrasound. Ultrasound waves are unable to penetrate very far into bone or gas and can't image bone or lung. Of course, Doppler estimations of cardiac output aren't precise and Doppler ultrasound probes are also difficult to calibrate. When we're using the cardiac Doppler, we tend to use esophageal probes. However, these need to be avoided in certain preconditions such as esophageal strictures, tumours and varices in your liver patients. And of course, there is always the risk of esophageal perforation with those probes. Here are some references. And here are all the images that we used in this presentation. I would just like to thank again Dr. Robin Lee and thank you, the listener, for listening to the free anaesthetic tutorial podcast. If this was useful, please do let us know. We also have a YouTube channel on, um, and you can search for that at Free Anesthetic Tutorials. And we also have a shared peer-to-peer -peer FRCA Video Viva Club. And that is can be accessed if you search for Mersey Video Viva Club. Thank you very much and thank you to, for listening.